blessings, blessings, blessings. Thank you for coming on. Please share, please share. Listen, you guys, share on Facebook. Share on your timeline. Invite your friends, invite your followers. I'm sure that you have a sister out there who will be blessed by the scope you all already know. My name is Meltoria Woodside. And I'm in the fight for our marriages. Blessings. So just, you know, just to give some time, many of you who probably have not heard my story before or have not um, caught it on YouTube, over 10 years ago, my marriage was faced with divorce. I was in the fight for my marriage. Um, I found out um, while I was about eight months pregnant, almost nine months pregnant, almost ready to give birth to my second son that my husband was unfaithful. And as you can imagine, um, as you can imagine, that can be very devastating, especially in the, the situation that I, <coughs> I was in. And so I found out that my beloved husband, my best friend, my high school sweetheart was unfaithful during a very delicate time in my life. And so, you know, as, as, as we all have come to that point, the question that I had to ask myself, will I stay in fight or will I give up on my marriage? And I, you know... At the time when I said that it was a very, it was a very, to me, it seems as it was a very easy decision because, you know, at that time, my husband was my best friend. We had already been together uh, five years before we got married. We were six years into marriage. And so this question that I had myself really wasn't difficult because I felt as if this was my best friend. Like, seriously, I'm not going to let my marriage, my family go down the dream over this, what I thought at the time was one incident. And so I said to myself that I was going to fight for my marriage. However, I had absolutely no clue or no idea what fighting for my marriage really looked like. And so I was at, so I was, I was at the time, you know, I was in limbo. I was walking like I was walking on water. I did not know what I was doing. Thank the Lord for Jesus. Thank God for Holy Spirit. That, you know, I toiled through, I've made it, and I've made it here. My husband and I, were still together, praise the Lord. We're now 18 years married, thank you Jesus. We are fully restored, glory be to God. And now I'm here to help wives to win, to, we are fighting for marriages. And, you know, I spent a lot of time last year trying to help people to understand why why fight for your marriage? You know, it's over. You know, we can't survive this or no, I wouldn't go through this or I wouldn't tolerate this and that. And so I spent a lot of time last year trying to defend why I am helping wives fight for their marriage. But the thing about it is, is that, you know, when the Lord told me to fight, to, to help wives fight, you know, he didn't, he didn't commission me to go um, um, to defend marriages. He did not commission me to, 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 to convince people why we should fight for our marriage. Ultimately, it's a decision that everybody has to make. I cannot make the decision for you because at the end of the day, I ain't going to be the one crying on your pillow. I ain't going to be the one hurting. I, I will not. So you have to make the decision whether you are going to go through it. Bottom line. Now, what I have found during the, 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 the times that I've been ministering to wives, you know, on Periscope, on Facebook, what I've found is, is that many people don't know who the real enemy is in their marriage. Many people do not have not a clue who the real enemy is in their marriage. And let me tell you something. There are just some things that some people just ain't going to understand. And it's not up to us. It is not up to you to try to help people to understand why you are fighting for your marriage. This is your marriage. It is yours. It belongs to you. This is your husband. This is your, listen there, by the time as you have gone through, by the time as you have gone through the altar, glory be to God, the Bible said the two shall become one. So now the, it isn't up to us to tell everybody or to defend why we fighting for our marriage. I think it's just so twisted that we have, to, why, why have to explain to people, come on now. Why have to explain to people why I'm fighting for my marriage, the husband I love? 
Somebody said, how can a husband soften the heart of his wife when there is no communication? That is a very good question. But I'm going to get to that. How, why do we have to defend why are we fighting for our family? Why? I think it's just so unfair. But let me tell you something to those of you who are out there. And you said, woman of God, I want to fight for my marriage. I want to tell you one thing. And this is, I believe, is the number one rule that you should understand when, you, when, you, when you're going on this journey. You have to understand who the enemy is in your marriage. You have to understand who the enemy is. Glory be to God. And so I found that a lot of women, you know, last year, you know, but, but my husband did this. He made the decision to do that. He did this. And, and, and you know, as long as you keep on seeing your husband as the enemy, you're going to be fighting your husband and you ain't going to get nowhere. Ephesians 6 and 12 tell, tells us, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Our, our, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the dark world and heavenly places. Come on now. And to talk about spiritual forces. So, so we have to understand. We, I, I, for me, I, you know, I was like, oh. I read the scripture like so much times, you know, back in the day. I've read it so much times, like I knew it by heart. But when we really begin to break it down, when we begin to crack it up, when we begin to dissect the word of God and to understand what it is really saying, we have then we will understand that our husband, our wives are not the enemy. Come on now. Our husbands are not the enemy. So while you pointing your finger at your husband, while you in prayer against your husband, while you in prayer against the other woman, you all you do it is is hitting the wall. You praying against the other woman, she is not your enemy. In in in, in the Greek, the uh, in the Greek, it defines struggle as a wrestle or a tug between. Where, 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 where parties are trying to overthrow each other, okay? So, so here it is now. It's saying our struggle is not between flesh and blood. This here, this, 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 this whole, the temple, our, our, our temple, the house, the man's house, the house of the spirit, the house of the soul, is not who you're fighting with. The, 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 the dictionary des describes struggle as to contend with a, an adversary or an opposing force. So who is your adversary in your marriage? Who is the adversary in your marriage? First Peter 5 and 8, the Bible tells us that we, we must be alert, be sober minded, because your en the enemy, your adversary, the enemy or the adversary, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, I know people say that we, get, we give the devil too much credit. Y'all know y'all had it all the time. You know, I, I, I agree with the statement. We give the devil too much credit. This is so true, so true. However, if you don't give him the credit that he deserves, if you don't give credit where credit is due, the devil will devour you. And so while you hear saying, oh, uh, uh, Herman, yeah, but Herman this and but Herman that. But, you know, Herman made the decision, Herman this and Herman that. Listen here, you, you keep on being mad with Herman. You go into prayer, I come against Herman in the name of Jesus. Let Herman stop doing it. You're hitting a brick, brick wall. Hitting a brick wall. And so it's important that you understand that your husband is not the enemy. If you don't understand this during your time of fighting, you won't be able to love him like you need to love him through this if you don't know or if you don't come to the realization that he is not the enemy. You're going to be mad at him. You're going to grow to hate him. You're going you, you're gonna to be angry at him for what he is doing. And, and mind you, let me just say this. Let me just plug this right in here. I've been to that place. I've been to that place where I was upset with my husband. I was so mad at him. Like, how could he treat me like this? How could he disrespect me? And you all already know. You all, you all already know how the devil is operating. 
When you see them, when you see them treat, cheating, it's, it's like they step down or they like they fall or something. Like you trying to figure out what what. What what the problem is, you know, because you are there, you looking nice, you looking good, you get your job, and they go and they go and mess it around with someone who, you know, who can't even walk a mile in your shoes, like who can't even sit next to you. It's it's like the caliber of 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 of, of woman who you once thought that he would be interested in, all of a sudden drop down from a ten to a zero. Like, what was he thinking? What is he thinking? What is she thinking? And so this alone could tell us something got to be wrong. Something got to be wrong. Listen now, when my husband cheat on me, when I tell you my head was spinning like a roller coaster, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand. I went into depression. I went into full, listen here, if I was a doctor, I would have diagnosed myself with clinical depression. If, if I was a psychologist, I would di diagnose myself, come on now, with depression, like what? Come on. And, and so here it is now, downgrade, someone say complete downgrade. The enemy will cause you. To miss out on a blessing. And he will deter you from your destiny. This is what his plan is. What you're going through. What you are going through right now. It's all a plan of the enemy. It's a plot. It's a tactic of the enemy. He wants you to quit on your marriage. He wants you to, 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 to abort the assignment that God have on your life. He wants to turn, listen, he wants you to turn in the opposite direction in which you will go in. But I bet the difference today, I'm, come, I'm calling you to, I'm calling you to a higher place of thinking. Because why? I want everything that belongs to me. Like devil, if, if you taking me out, listen, you need that you, cheaper you take my life. Because I ain't quitting. Come on, somebody. In 2 Corinthians 2 and 11, it said, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And so here it is, is that we're being, because we don't understand the enemy, because we don't know who he is, because we cannot identify the works of the enemy. Come on now. He's taking advantage of many of us because we don't know who he is. We, we don't know who he is. We don't know that this anger, great, greetings uh, from waters, greetings, we don't know that this anger that your husband is praying, um, 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 the anger that your husband is expressing, the hurt, the pain, come on now, the disrespect, we don't know that there is a force behind it. Now, I, you know, there are people, listen here, we have to upgrade our thinking. You know, we have to upgrade our thinking. We have to think on a different level than the world is thinking. Because you know many in the world, they're thinking, oh no, he decided to do that. You know, he, he, ain't nobody forced him to do that. See, they don't understand how the realms of the spirit work. And so we have to have a different thought pattern as the world. When, when, when they're seeing your husband as the one making decisions, we can't see it like that. That's why you see in the Bible when the Lord called, come on now, he called Paul, he called Saul, who was a murderer. He called him to, to a murderer to have this great ministry because he, was in, he didn't look at what he did. He looked at, listen here, he looked at the greater purpose in him. He looked at the greater purpose inside of him. My God, we better thank God that that that. Listen here, we 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 better thank God that. But we better we better we better be thankful that the Lord don't judge us like the world judges. Because many of you on here, many of you on here, including myself, my Lord, I've been condemned to hell. I I, I say I probably would have been the gatekeeper if we be real and honest. It is so sad to see people giving up on their marriage. Not because the marriage is not meant to be. And I talk about that all the time. You know, the enemy have this thing. Oh, you know, you probably married the wrong one. 
You know, you you that probably ain't the one. Come on, out of gate keeper. You know, we we grew apart. You know, my my I, I don't love him no more. You know, or 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 or, or some some may say, oh, I ain't in love with him no more. The devil is a liar. The reality and the thing that we are ignorant to is all these are uh, traps, schemes, plots of the enemy to take advantage of you. You know, the Bible declares that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And so many of us out here are perishing because we don't have the knowledge and we don't have the understanding of what the enemy is doing in our lives. And that's why you blame your husband. I blame my husband too. I blame, listen here, back in the day, over 11, 12 years ago, I blamed my husband. And so in blaming him, I grew a, listen, I began to grow a hatred towards him. Even though I said I was fighting for my marriage, I felt, I felt head first out of love. Because I always looked at him and I couldn't understand why he's treating me like this. Why he's disrespecting me. Why, why the, the physical abuse, the mental abuse, the emotional abuse, the verbal abuse. Like why? Like how could you do this to me? And so I couldn't have the compassion that I needed in order to love him through it. I, listen here. Let me be real with you guys out there, people out there. I know I tell many of you. You know, it, despite of what your husband is doing, you got to love him through it. You still got to show love. You know, you still got to show compassion. How many of us get mad with our husband? We still got to fix him food. You know, we upset. We still got to we still got to do the necessary things that we need to do in order to, you know, to keep him going. We still have to give ourselves to our husband. But I, I because I didn't know who my enemy was, Listen, I grew apart from my husband. And it, for those of you who don't have a copy um, um, of my book, When Wives Fight, Families Win, I encourage you to get a copy of it. That's right. We still got to honor him. This is why we are cautioned in 1 Peter 5 and 8. It said, be alert and of sober mind. Be alert. Be awoke. Be of sober mind. Now, let me tell you something. I know the power of hurt and pain. I, I ain't telling, you all already know, I ain't telling you something that I have not walked through. I know the power of hurt and I know the power of pain. Be alert or vigilant. Be attentive to discover and avoid danger. Because now that I'm, I was hurt, because I was going to, through pain, I wasn't able to avoid danger. I was not able to, 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 to discover or to, to, or to be um, um, aware of when the enemy is in here. The enemy will attack you one thing after the other, one thing after the other. Don't think that you go through your marriage and you know what, I want to deal with this. I, I, I ain't fooling with this. I ain't going through this. Don't think that you're giving this up now and then the enemy just going to stop. Oh, oh, he ain't going to stop. He coming after your children. He coming after your money. He coming after your mind. He coming after everything. So, so, so here it is to be sober mind. You know what? I said, God, when I was reading the scripture, I said, sober mind. Now, you know what? When I talk with sober, I talk about, I'm thinking about not drunk, right? I'm thinking about not drunk. And so when Holy Spirit really showed me this and I, I really started to dive and I really started to look up what the Bible is talking about, be sober. Now, now I, I had to shift my, my thought pattern. I had to shift my thought pattern because see in sober, sober in the scripture, it said not be mad or insane, not be wild or heated with passion, not on the influence of passion. My God, a sober judgment. And so, when I was going through, when I was going through, when Meltoria was hurting, when Meltoria was in pain, I was not sober mind. See, that's why I caution people all the time to be careful of the decisions that you're making while you're hurting. Be careful of the decision that you're making while you're in pain. Because 
at this point in time, it ain't you making the decision. It's not you. The, the moment you felt that hurt, and the moment you felt in pain, then all of a sudden you start, you hear this whispering in your ear. The enemy started to talk, start now to talk to some of y'all. Y'all don't even know y'all hear the enemy voice, but let me tell you something. When you're in pain, you will, you will hear his voice very clearly. And it will sound sweet. Oh, you don't, you don't need this. You, you don't need to go through this. You don't need him no more. Oh, you don't deserve that. You, you need to go. You can find better. And so now, now, now that you're hurt, now that you're in pain, that's just like drinking alcohol and getting drunk. Because you're not, you're no longer in sober mind. You're not being rational in your thinking. If that's why I was doing a, 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 a group a couple of months ago. I was, I was doing this a couple, that's right, why you keep dealing with this? I was dealing with a group a couple months ago. And I was telling them, listen here, when you were at the altar, when you made this decision that you would be with this man or with this woman until death to us part, at that particular time, if someone would have asked you, would you fight for your marriage? What would you say? Of course. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. See, that's that's when you are a sober mind. Right? Now that this 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 is a, 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 a glory be to God. You at that point now you are a sober mind because guess what? You're feeling the love. You're feeling the joy. You're feeling happiness. So now you're thinking clearly. You're thinking clearly. Let me tell you something. I did marriage counseling before I got married. And the man of God asked me the question. He said, Meltoria, if your husband cheats on you, will you stay with him? Oh, yes. Of course. My husband was asked the same question. Yo, Costa, if your wife, if she cheats on you while you're married, would you stay? He said yes. I mean, listen, we didn't even think about it. We didn't even think about it. Sober mind. This is a point of sober mind. So I, so I said, go back to that place where you were happy and make the decision whether you're going to fight for this marriage here that you're seeing, this man here that is treating you. Go back to that place where you were and make the decision. Will you fight for your marriage? I tell people all the time, be careful of the decisions that you're making now that you're hurt and that you're, you're in pain. See, what we don't know is sin is not the only thing that opened demonic doors in our lives. Ah, I know I'm messing somebody up. Sin is not the only thing that opened demonic doors in our lives. Let me let that sink for a second. Because I know, you know, so th that's why the ministry of deliverance, a lot of Christians can't accept it. Come on now. <laughs> Glory be to God. A, 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 lot of, a, a lot of saints can't accept the ministry of deliverance. Because they don't understand it, isn't it? Although I save, I still need deliverance. Oh, not because I know they're sitting and fornicating and committing adultery and, 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 and drinking and lying. That don't mean that I don't have an issue that I have to deal with. See, I was hurt. And now that now because I was hurt, I need healing. I need emotional healing. Come on now. My God. Before I started having issues in my marriage, my views on marriage and marital issues were totally different. Totally different. Can I be honest? Before I started going through the hell of my marriage, my views on marriages were totally different. Like I would tell a sister in a heartbeat, don't put up with that foolishness. Oh, no child. You got to be better. I, me, okay? I would say that in a heartbeat. And I know many of you can attest. You see a sister and, and you see a sister she going through and you saying in your head, why is she dealing with that? Why is she dealing? Why is she still with him? You probably have an aunt or a sister or somebody you know who going through, and you're looking at her like, no child. I I wouldn't deal with that. Oh, she is a fool. No way. 
Ain't no man, ain't no man gonna treat me like that. These are my words. I don't know what y'all are saying. I ain't gonna let no man treat me like that. If my, if my husband cheat on me, no honey, these are my words, people. No way, I ain't putting up with that foolishness. Opinion, 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 opinion. He ain't all that, no? Come on now. Opinion, 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 opinion. Come on now. We drunk with passion. Drunk with passion. There's so much people on social media talking Oh, you don't have to put up with this in your marriage. You don't have to do this. You, you, you need to know your word. Drunk with passion. Not sober. Drunk with passion. Allowing society to shape in our minds, in our views, in our emotions. And tell us what we got to do with marriage. You got people out there commenting on marriage. What are you married? Not because you divorced. Come on now. You you divorced, but you have everything to say but marriage. Come on now. Drunk with passion. Glory be to God. Oh, 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 my Lord. When reality hit, confusion got the best of me. All of a sudden, my strong opinion got challenged. My strong opinion, I wouldn't do this. I ain't doing that for no man. Oh, that all everything I said got challenged, and God helped the people who listened to me to say, "Leave your husband because he was doing something crazy." Lord help everyone, because now that it was my time, now that I was next up in line, my views all of a sudden get shake. My opinion get shake. I got stirred. The enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The enemy comes, this is what the scripture saying. Who is the enemy? The enemy is our adversary, the devil. He comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. In your marriage, he wants to kill your spirit by stealing your peace, your love, and your joy, and your happiness. And then he wants to destroy your destiny and your purpose. That's why you're going through this. Because he's trying to kill your spirit. He's trying to steal your peace. Your love, your joy, and your happiness. And then he wants to destroy your destiny and your purpose. My God. And, and, and I'm only thinking about this because I'm looking back at my life. If I had allowed the enemy to, 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 to destroy my spirit. To, the, to steal my peace, my joy, my the love and happiness. If I allowed him to do it, he would have destroyed my destiny. The place where I am now. The families that I've helped through this ministry. He would have destroyed all of that. There is somebody out there waiting for you to win. There is somebody out there depending on you to win. There is a marriage that have not been joined together as yet that are waiting for you. They are waiting for you to go through this in order that you can help them when it's their time to go through. See, the, 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 where, where we become deceived, we come into thinking that it can never happen to us. We, we are deceived into thinking if we marry the right man, oh, I'm waiting to hear from the Lord. I'm waiting to hear what God says. I want the man who God have for me. We're, we are deceived into thinking that if we do it all right, then we ain't going to go through no trouble. The enemy wants to destroy you right now because there is a wife who is going to get married in a few years that going to need to hear your voice. That's what he's trying to do. Glory be to God, my Lord. This is why... You need to stand and fight. Let me tell you something. We can, you know what, me. I complain about what I have gone through. <coughs> when I was going through, I remember why I have to go through this. Why? Why me? I don't deserve this in my own eyes. 
not thinking about what Jesus had to go through in order that I be here? You see, you, you come on now. We do you know what 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 had to go into play? What had to line up? What had to go in perspective? What had to go into order in order for you to even be here? See, because if Jesus Christ didn't come, the first lie that you tell was going to probably get you swallowed up by the earth. Come on now. You stole from someone. You hurt someone. You probably would have been, you probably get shot down by lightning. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. That's why I try to encourage people. Listen here. We got to, I, I know this value. Value yourself as a woman. Who you are as an individual. Value yourself. But my God, be careful not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to. Because we have to remember what Jesus had to go through. For one. We, had to re we have to remind ourselves of who he was. He was the only son God had. And we have to remember that his, of his purpose. We have to be reminded of his purpose. See, we all have purpose. God ain't just put you here, you know, to be a chess piece on the earth, to move you to and from the grocery store. Come on now, in and out of your husband's bed. The Lord ain't just put you here for that. You have a divine purpose. And what you are going through don't determine who you are. It don't devalue you because you are going through something right now. That's why we have so much ministers of the gospel trying to save face. We're going through as ministers of the gospel. We're going through in our marriage, but we're trying to save face because there is a persona out there that people should think of us as a certain image. My God. Oh, glory be to God. Your husband is not the enemy. And if you fight against your husband thinking you're going to make things better, you won't. If you fight against your husband, thinking you are protecting your kids, you're not. Come on now, got it all together. Wives, I encourage you today, January 14, 2019, to stop thinking that you're protecting your children from something. We we wanna oh I, I I can't go through this because I don't want I don't want to see my children I don't want my children to see me going through this. Stop thinking that you're protecting them from something. Because when is their time? Not if, when is their time? They won't know how to handle it because they've never seen it before. My God. When it's their time, you you divorcing your husband. Because you think you're saving your children from something. But you're opening them up. You're opening them up to them even more than they have to deal with when they're going through right now. You're opening, opening your children up to doors that, listen here, would have been closed had you just stick it out. You're, you're, you're exposing them to the enemy. You're putting them out there. Divorce is a destructor. Destroyer. If you fight against flesh and blood, you will be defeated. If you fight against flesh and blood, you will be defeated. I, I cannot tell you that there's no other way. I know it's not easy to get up and pray. It's not easy to declare that your husband is something when you don't even see him as that. Come on now, my kids play a major role part, a major part in why I'm staying. Come on now, my children was my why too. Glory be to God. The battle, this is this 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 ain't no physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. This is not a physical battle. Something that you could touch, something that you can feel, something that you can see. It's not a natural. Come on now. It's not a natural, but a supernatural battle. Come on now. My Lord, have mercy. We're fighting principalities, powers. 
You're fighting authorities. You're fighting spiritual forces. Come on now. Now, I want you to imagine something. And I, I'm hoping that I'm helping somewhere out there. Because listen here. There was a time when I was growing weary. And I thank God for testimonies. I thank God for testimonies. And I saw, and, and, and <laughs> some people even, even tell me, woman of God, you know, I didn't want to tell you this testimony because you know what? I just wanted all to be great. And I wanted all to be lined up, you know, and, and whatever. But I thank God for testimonies. Even as I have released on my last video, I said, that listen, the Lord said, this is the year of manifestation. And I believe that when he said that the prayers that I've been praying will be manifested. It was the it was the next day. I had a woman of God. The woman of God called me. Woman of God, I was just listening to your scope and I, I've been meaning to call you. But I, I just was putting it off. But you know what? My husband, he, he started to prepare stuff. He came in the house. He started to fix up stuff. And then he told me he's coming home. He's going to get his stuff and he's coming home. Now I ain't talking about somebody who just, you know, say they ain't gonna fight and just stand there. See, see, <laughs> my God, it's, it's just not enough. It's not enough for you to just make your decision and say, I'm going to fight. Just sticking there is not enough. Just standing up and just saying that, you know, I, I ain't a divorce. I just stand in here and, and, and I can just tune into Periscope. I can tune into Facebook Live. I can tune into the prayer line. I can, I can um, tie up with this prayer work. It's not enough. You got to get in the fight. You got to be the one to do the things necessary in order for the heavens to come on now to shake and move on, on your behalf. There is nobody more powerful, nobody with more authority to pray or to make declarations concerning your marriage than you. Come on now. You come on now. You got to stretch for Gerard. You got what you need is in your hand. What you need is in your mouth. That's why 2019, I ain't doing counseling. I doing coaching. I got to hold your hand. You got to be the one to make the declarations. You got to be the one to pray the prayers. You got to be the one to believe. You got to be the one to sow. You got to be the one. Come on now. Because why? The heaven is waiting for to respond to your voice concerning your marriage because you have the authority over your marriage. I don't have the authority over your husband. Come on now. Now listen to this. We have to identify and we got to know who the enemy is. That's why we 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 in battle. And, and, and you know, we fighting against the wind. We we fighting against our husband. We fighting against the other woman. We fighting against everybody except the real enemy. He he listen there. He ducking and dodging. You know, and the devils listen there. These demonic spirits they stubborn. If you ain't call them, listen there. They ain't resting. Even they ain't even moving. If you don't if you don't find out who they is, if you don't identify them, they are moving. Why are you thinking the Bible? Jesus had to call them out by name. Come on now. Imagine this now. Now I know I know I usually have people from you know different countries and you know all over the world on my periscope. I thank God for that. But imagine wherever you are, whatever country you are, imagine this. Imagine your country coming up underneath the top. You get a listen, a bomb come from somewhere, you know, or all, all you know is, is when the attack hit, blind it. Listen here. You're under attack. Your country's under attack. You don't know where the strike come from. You gather all your weapons, all your arsenal. You get the troops ready. Come on now. Help me to imagine this. You get all the troops ready. The army ready. The navy ready. Whatever. Whatever military forces you all have. You all are ready. Guns drawn and everything. But you ain't know. You, 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 you ain't know who you gonna fire at. You 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 know who who you gonna fire at? Where where the bullet gonna hit? Where 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 the aim to? Come on now, Be running like I had cut off. You when you even when you pray.
pray prayers, you have to be specific. You got to have targeted prayers. So you can hit the right target. So you can hit the bullseye. You ain't missing in the spirit. Come on now. Now, I know in our minds, you know, we get an attack. The first person we accuse is the first person we can see. The one that is visible, the one that makes sense, you know, our neighbor. You know, sister right there. Sister, oh, she, she the one. She the, she the enemy. He the enemy. He's the one made the decision. Oh, she in this, right? So, so, so now here it is. We done attacking our husband. We attacking the other woman. We attacking whoever, you know, in the surroundings. Or, or he responsible. Or he help him. Or he just uh, 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 help him. Come on now. He give him a place to stay. They 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 just go by his friend house. So now you you hitting your neighbor. You, you think you see him? They near. It makes sense. Boom! You send your troops out to attack. Boom! Those prayers are out. You send everything. Oh, whew, my lord! You send the, the bombs out. You you get the, the all the guns out. You get them now. We talking about the the military force now. Boom! You hit him. You hit your husband. You hit the other woman. You hit his mama because guess what? She know he cheating. He know she know he married. He allowing him to come over. Come on now. You allowing it? So you hit mama. You hit the sisters because they allowing it. They allowing them to the picnic. Come on now. You hit him. You destroying them. Now he cheating again. Now you get another attack. Uh, now you, you definitely confused now because you done destroy the neighbor, the sister, the mummy, everybody getting it. You done destroy all of them. Come on now. But you, you, you still get attacked. You still, you still get a bomb coming out. Nah, come on now. We, we talking about my illustration of the nation being hit and not knowing who hit them. Then you get another attack. And you're confused. How is it? Come on now. It ain't them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now because you destroyed the wrong one, the wrong person, the real issue, the real enemy, then you ain't defeated nothing. And now we've been fighting in the air. We done fighting it. We've been fighting everybody. Now you ain't get no more fight. You ain't get no more prayer left. You don't grow weary. You ain't got no more prayer left. Because you've been praying for two years and you ain't hit the enemy yet because you've been fighting the wrong fight. Come on, somebody. Come on now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Am, I, am I talking to somebody? Come on now. Let me tell you something. I remember a time when I got so upset with my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law. I got, listen here, utterly upset. I got upset. I got upset. Because they gone get, you know, my husband's child without me knowing. Or they even gone get him in the first place, period. Because I wasn't accepting the child. So why did I, I thinking I didn't accept him. So y'all shouldn't accept him. You know, something I'm telling you. See what, see what the Bible said, we be sober minded. Not drunk with passion. Now, because of all the passion on the si inside of me, because of what I'm going through at the time, I bought with everybody. I'm mad with them. Like, why they have the child? The husband's child, yes. Two children. My husband have two children. Outside of infidelity. So I'm mad. I'm mad with them. Because they getting the child. What? It's their flesh and bloody. My flesh and blood is theirs. So I'm mad with them. Let me tell you something. When I begin to tune my ass into the Holy Spirit. And the Lord tell me I had to go and forgive them. I was too shame. Too shame. Now, I put up a hindering block to my prayers because I mad with everybody shooting the wrong fight. Come on now. Proverbs 6, 30 to 31. Man, do not, do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. But if he is found, he will restore. Door, sevenfold. Do not, do not despise the thief that they thieving because they hungry. 
Don't despise them. But if they are found, come on now. If they are found, the Bible says they will have to return sevenfold. Now, see, the problem, I, I, I really had to ask. I was so excited about this scripture. I guess if the thief is discovered, he would have to pay sevenfold, even if it cost him his entire house. Blessings. He would have to sevenfold, yet he'd have to pay me back. Some of y'all waiting for the enemy to pay you back. But you gotta get paid back because you ain't discovered who the enemy is. Blessings. You ain't discovered who the enemy is. The Bible clearly said when the thief is discovered. The reason why we have these uh, smoke bomb prayers. Because we, and we ain't hitting nothing. Praying for two years, the same thing, nothing happened, no change, no shifting. Because guess why? We don't know who the enemy is. We striking the wrong targets. We ain't getting no payback. The enemy can't pay no sevenfold because we have not, we have yet to discover who he is. If the thief is discovered, he will have to pay you back sevenfold. So now here it is. I encourage you. I challenge you now. To begin to look at your issues through a spiritual lens and not your physical ones. Because see, it's so easy, it's very easy to look at everything through our physical eyes, through our physical lens. We want to see it because it's easy to see, it's easy to pinpoint because it's flesh and blood. But the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, that being your problem. Your problem is not the flesh and the blood. Come on now. Now I know this in the scripture. I know this caused you all to leap. It's caused plenty of people to leap. It caused me to leap. Don't be so happy in this scripture. Because it says if the thief is discovered, we got to find out who the enemy is. And you know, even even in now, here it is. We have this whole situation, you know, with John Gray and his wife. And everybody's all mad. And upset with the woman of God because she decided to fight for her family. <coughs> because she decided to fight for her family. Because she's standing by her husband. Let me tell you something. That's not wrong. It's not. It's not. What he did is not okay. But it's not wrong for her to stand up for her husband. It's not wrong for her to fight for her family. If you want to fight for your marriage, or if you want to fight for any area of your life, one of the most important things before anything, you have to know your enemy. If you know your enemy, you can fight your enemy. We're, we're, we're becoming weary because we're looking at our husband and we're looking at our wives. And we're looking at them in the eyes of the flesh. We're looking at them with our spiritual lens. And we're unable to see what is going on. Who, who, who are they in God? You know the Bible says that we are seated in Christ. In Christ. We are seated in Christ. And so are you able to tap into the realm of the spirit? Are you able to tap into the dimensions of God and pull out? The man or the woman who God has created them to be. Now, it sounds impossible. It sounds impossible. It sounds crazy. I know that. I hear it all the time. But when I've done it, when I, I, I've seen wives do it, the scripture says, for with God, nothing is impossible. For with God, nothing is impossible. It becomes impossible when we start doing it with man. When we start doing it in our own flesh. That's why it's important for us to understand 
now a different realm. I know. Gone all the way out there. But see, this is the real. This is the real. You you fighting and kicking with your husband? Ain't gonna work. My God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Elevate your thinking now. Whenever, whenever there is something going on in my life that is contrary to what I believe that is God ordained, what I believe is contrary to God ordained according to the promises that God has for me, then I begin to look deeper. I said on a couple of my videos ago, I noticed that my family was running in a, a cycle of drought at a, at a particular time every year. We, are experience, we, we experience great lack. You know, the first two times, you ain't really recognize it because it, it seems usual. But when you begin to, to tap into new realms and new dimensions in God, when you, when you tap into relationship with God, you know, praying in the spirit and, and just getting that, that, relation and that relationship and that oneness with God, then you begin to see things from a different view. It's important that many of you who are fighting for your marriage, you got to, for a moment... You have to put that on the side and you have to channel your energy to building your strength, to healing, to deliverance. Because guess what? If you don't, all you could be doing is making decisions out of the heat of passion. When the Bible said we are to be sober mind, your mind is clouded with hurt, clouded with pain. So all you could see is what your husband doing. You can't, you can't see beyond that. You, you can't see that there's a spiritual force behind what is going on. It won't even make sense. The pain that you go through, the pain that you experience, it won't even make sense. All you know right now is your husband did it. He made the decision. He turned that way. He did it. That's all. That's all. And so I want to encourage you to take a moment and rest in God. And rest in God. I see someone said earlier, I'm getting weary. Rest in God. Rest in the presence of the Lord. Because guess why? You're going you to you you allow the enemy to sabotage, to overthrow, to overrule. Someone asked the question, so is there a spiritual force behind vindictive, unforgiven wife? Absolutely. There's a spirit of unforgiveness. There's a Jezebel spirit. There's a spirit of bitterness. So that means she probably experienced a, a level of hurt. Hurt. I, I, listen here. I, if I would say so myself... Before my husband really ripped me apart, I was a very sweet woman. I was so sweet. Come on, I was a, I was a sweet, I was sweet. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When my husband heard me, I was a different person, like a can of worms. God opened up. And thank God, thank God. So, <coughs> here is the thing. It doesn't matter. You know, if we believe God, we got to believe God. And we got to believe his word. I, I, I don't care what kind of witchcraft, Satanism, occultism, or what's going on. There is nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And he said that he had given us the power and the authority over all the powers of the enemy. So you have to stand. Come on, someone said I was a sweet woman. You have to stand, and you have to stand in your authority, and you got to, you got to, you, you got to now, you have to switch gears, you have to take the, the fight into the enemy's camp. He brought it into your home, now you got to take it into his camp. And so you have to learn spiritual warfare, you got to begin to, to learn how to tap into the spirit of God. You got to, listen, you got to pray by the spirit, you got to, you got to, you got to let Holy Spirit pray. I mean, come on, that's, just, that, that's another topic for another time. Another topic for another time. I encourage you to check on my YouTube, Meltoria W. Subscribe to my channel. And check out my YouTube videos. I believe it will be a blessing to you. I don't know, just let me know if it has been. 
Thank you for following me. So if this is your first time, be sure to check out my YouTube, subscribe. I know many of you has been, have been watching my videos. I'm so thankful for that. But I ask kindly if you subscribe, subscribe, get on the bell, check on that. Blessings. So listen here, you guys. I pray, first time, I thank you for coming on. I pray that in the days to come, even as you go through, that I challenge you to look deeper. Look deeper, search deeper. Ask Holy Spirit the question, who am I fighting in my marriage? You may be fighting a generational curse. You may be fighting, um, uh, um, like someone said earlier, you may be fighting demonic systems, a cult, demonic practices, religious error. You may be fighting something, it, it may not, although adultery may be um, the fruit, it may not be the root. It may be the fruit, but it might not be the root. And so you have to find the root of the thing in order for you to really, what, dig it up. You can't destroy a tree unless you destroy the root. And this is why it's important to fight this thing in the spirit so Holy Spirit can identify issues. If you do not send your missile, your arsenal to the right enemy, you're going to be fighting in vain. So listen here, you guys. I pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. If you are joining me for the first time, if you're just coming on, do check out the replay or check me out on YouTube. I'll be there. Subscribe. In the meantime, between time, listen, hang in there. God can do anything but fail, and he will not fail you. I say this all the time. The Lord is not a respecter of persons. If he did it for me, he can and he will do it for you. Thank you for coming on my broadcast. See you guys next time. If you want to message me, send me an email, meltoria.woodside at gmail.com. Check out my website, www.therealmarriageministry.com. Be a blessing to someone else. Send this in someone's inbox. Send this in someone's DM. Tell them, hey, check this out. Be a blessing to someone. Share the good news that God is restoring marriages. Blessings. Thank you guys for coming on.